So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Liz Truss eyeing a bonfire for workers' rights to, quote, boost the economy. It's going to do absolutely none of that. So Liz Truss is preparing to shake up Britain's post-Brexit employment rights as part of her agenda to kickstart the economy before the next election. I mean, I'm sure getting, you know, cutting down people's holiday pay and making them work more hours. Yeah, that's really going to go down well. The Foreign Secretary is expected to be confirmed as Britain's next Prime Minister. I mean, by the time you watch this, we'll have an answer. She includes, you know, wanting to reform the 48-hour working week in an attempt to make the improve the competitiveness of the UK. How will that make us compete more, burning people out quicker? It doesn't make any sense. This move will set her on a collision course with the unions, which we're already at. You know, we're already on a collision course with the unions. Risk being exploited by Labour, who will claim Liz Truss-led government will reduce protections and rights on sensitive issue- issues such as holiday entitlement, pay and working conditions, which Labour would absolutely be correct on. And those are easy issues for Labour to win on. One source in the trust camp said it would take political courage for the next Prime Minister to face down the opposition to the changes, but said it was critical for the new government to address labour market reforms if it wanted to fulfil its pledge to improve productivity and competitiveness. It's not going to improve productivity though, you know, people in this country are obsessed with working more hours because they think you're going to be more productive. You you realise people burn out over the day, right? That even even a seven or six hour workday may be a bit excessive because you're just gonna you're gonna peak and then you're gonna drop off massively through the day. It doesn't make sense to have such long working days in some regards. That's why a four day work week makes so much sense. You know, it's not gonna make us compete more as more and more countries move away from endless working hours and um, you know move more towards things like a four day work week. You're gonna see a massive change between how the UK sees productivity and how other countries see it. And let's not forget here, this is ironic from a bunch of MPs who have so much free time in the year. They're constantly on, they're on recess for large amounts of the year, especially when you compare that to other jobs. The policy is expected to be led by uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Victorian, who is lined up by trust to become the next business secretary. Um, apparently, Kwateng was meant to do these reforms, but he backed out because, obviously, we had the pandemic. Um, you know, among the changes to the 48-hour work week, it, you know, it prevents workers from being discriminated against or sacked if they refuse to work over 48 hours. So, say, for example, if your, if your manager wants you to put in more hours over 48 hours, which I think 48 is quite excessive, you can just say no, and they can't, they can't fire you for it or treat you any differently, which I think is the correct way to go about it. The new government is also understood to want to look at rules on taking breaks, calculating holiday pay that guarantees most people four uh, four weeks holiday a year plus bank holidays. I mean, you're going to burn people out here. You know, 28 days, you know, you get a month off a year. That's not a lot. Four weeks, it's not a month, it's 28 days at best. Um, you know, that's a bit low in my opinion, but the simple fact is you're going to burn through people so quickly. Um, it's going to be unreal and people just hate their jobs, especially when you have a labour shortage. So how is making things worse for workers going to help solve your labour crisis? It doesn't make any sense. These rules were adopted into the UK by statutory instruments, so they could be dropped by the government without the need for primary legislation. So it might be able a way to kind of avoid MPs, uh, in, a, in a way avoid MPs, which I think is not very democratic. Trust has already pledged that all EU regulators will be scrapped. Uh, will be scrapped by the end of next year, apart from those explicitly endorsed by government ministers. This would allow the government to let elements of the directive fall away without a head-on confrontation with MPs. So effectively, she's going to be ducking MPs by doing this coward's play here from the, quote, you know, democratic people who don't like unelected bureaucrats, despite the fact that no one elected Liz Truss to be prime minister. In a final message to the campaign, Truss said she believed in a brighter and better future for Britain. She said, if I'm elected Prime Minister, I will ne- never let anyone talk to us down. And the fact is, right, she's talking us down, though. She's saying we want to be comp- more competitive with other countries. That's talking us down. You're saying we're not as good as those other countries. We can't compete with those other countries. So literally in this article, in your speech, you have talked the country down by your own definition, because that's what they say, right? Every time you say, oh, we can't do this or we can't do that, you know, you get accused of talking the country down. So that's effectively what Liz Truss has done, saying we can't compete with other countries unless we deregulate. That's talking us down. She said if she was elected, her bold plan would grow the economy and deliver workers higher wages. I mean, I suppose you would get paid more if you put in more hours. Um, but yeah, that's just, that's a stupid point from her. She says, this, I'll, I'll do this by cutting taxes again. You only pay tax if you earn, I think it's over £12,000. Um, that's not going to help a lot uh, certain people in this country. Uh, pushing through supply side reform, that's very nebulous and no idea what that means. Um, 
especially when you look at all the red tape they've added when it comes to imports and exports. It's flashing red tape that's holding businesses back. Well, that's Brexit for you. Isn't it? That's really done that. In a labour shortage, without freedom of movement, it does cause us problems. Um, and our imports and exports are um, not doing too great as well. And you've only just added more red tape, not gotten rid of it. Francis O'Grady, the General Secretary of the TUC, said Truss's number one priority should be to help families pay the bills this winter, which is true. Um, you know, threatening hard-won workers' rights is not the way to go. Um, she said these are vital workplace protections and rights not nice to have, which is also true. Um, these are things that people had to fight hard for in the past, and I think people have taken things like holiday pay, the amount of holiday time, these things for granted. And Dim Zahawi, the Chancellor, said the government would need to extend the cost of living support well into next year. Zahawi told a policy exchange event in London that the government would prioritise those who had literally no headroom at all. The irony is, Zahawi, mate, is um, yeah, that government you're part of is going to be dismantled and it's going to be the Liz Trust administration. So the point you're making here is, is valid, that people will need help going into next year. It's just sad that that's probably not going to happen. A poll found that only 13% of voters think Truss would be a good Prime Minister, with Britain unconvinced by her um, plans for economic, uh, the economy and energy bills, because she's been very vague on a lot of things, and she doesn't understand economics. Truss is less popular than Boris Johnson when he entered number 10, and far behind Theresa May when she took office. Of voters who backed the Tories at the last election, 25% think she would be a good Prime Minister, 35% think she would be a bad one. So that's a net negative right there, a huge net negative. Um... She's not going to last long. Um, she's not going to last long, I think, in this role. The question is, how much damage can she do in the next two years? Yeah, that That's the fear. You know, It will take time to put these deregula deregulatory measures in place, especially when we're going through a cost of living crisis. Doing it now may not be the most productive use of time, especially because of the massive cut to civil servants as well. That's a huge problem for the government. But um, you know, aside from her very dodgy outfit choice in this picture... Um, I'm I'm very nervous. You know, she's talking about trickle down economics, and we know trickle down economics doesn't work. You know, we know for a fact it doesn't work. Yet she's piping it up, saying it's a great thing, and she's going to be worse than Boris Johnson, ain't she? It's a be careful what you wish for kind of situation. Just got to hope Labour and the Lib Dems really get their acts together, and the SNP really get get things going, and um, just go into some sort of coalition or even a minority government if Labour can do that, and just get rid of this lot once and for all because. They're an absolute plague, honestly. Um, it's it's terrifying the amount of damage that they've done over the last 12 years, but this kind of last kind of flurry from them could be the worst of it. As bad as David Cameron, Theresa May and Boris Johnson were, I've got a feeling this trust will be worse. But anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.